Today I'm gonna to be breaking that down for you, whether it comes to wholesaling or buying a house traditionally and explaining what earnest money is, how it works, what to expect, how much money you need for earnest money, and what happens if the deal falls apart. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Derek, AKA Flipping a House, and I'm a real estate investor here in Houston, Texas. You probably clicked this video because you wanna truly understand how earnest money works when it comes to real estate transactions. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking that down for you, whether it comes to wholesaling or buying a house traditionally and explaining what earnest money is, how it works, what to expect, how much money you need for earnest money, and what happens if the deal falls apart. See, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to a real estate deal, and earnest money is typically the first step after signing the contract. But before we get there, let's understand what is earnest money. Earnest money, or EMD, as you may hear it called, is an earnest money deposit. And it simply is that. Earnest money that you deposit on a deal, meaning that you will close on the deal or you have intentions of purchasing the property. Now, earnest money is not always required, but in the state of Texas, you do have to put some money down for a deal to be official. Once again, this is just a good faith measure and it's one of those you're putting your money where your mouth is. As mentioned before, the first step of a real estate transaction is actually signing the contract. The next would be earnest money. Now in the contract, it's usually gonna state that you have three to five days from signing the contract to put down that earnest money. Now in a regular real estate transaction, as if you're buying your personal residence, Typically, the realtor will assist you with some of these things, so you may not have to reference back to this video. And today, I'm gonna to be touching on three different ways that earnest money is going to be handled. That's whether you're dealing with a traditional transaction and you're buying your primary residence, whether you're buying a, an investment property from a wholesaler, or if you're wholesaling a property, how to deal with that earnest money with the seller. Now in both cases, a traditional real estate transaction and an investing transaction, the earnest money should always be put with the title company. Now I know things can be a little bit tricky when you're wholesaling, but let's start with a traditional transaction. In a traditional real estate transaction, an agent will be helping you and this money will be taken to the title company. Now the title company will hold that money the entire transaction and when you go to close on the deal, they will actually give you a credit for that amount you put down. Now in a cash transaction, things are gonna be a little bit different because you're either gonna be dealing with the wholesaler directly or you're gonna be dealing with an agent if you're buying off the MLS. And in that case, you'll just reference back to how you deal with it if you were buying your primary residence. But in a cash transaction, the wholesaler is going to want you to deposit that money with them. Now, if I can make a recommendation, if possible, try to give the earnest money to the title company and I'll explain why in just a second. Now, on a cash transaction, when you're dealing with a wholesaler, this is why I mentioned you wanna give it to the title company because if something happens and say they do not get clear title and you gave the money directly to them, yes, they're supposed to pay you back, but that doesn't mean they're going to. Having the money at the title company just acts as a third barrier and saves you a lot of time and headache. Now, for if you're looking to wholesale a property and you're dealing directly with the seller, like I said, sometimes you can get away with putting as little as a dollar down, and sometimes you may have to put that 3,000 down. A lot of times when we're wholesaling properties, we try to max it out at the 1% as we would a normal transaction. But now I'm gonna talk about what is expected when it comes to earnest money. Now first, if we're going back to the traditional transaction, it's typically 1% of the purchase price. Meaning if you have a $150,000 home, you're expected to put down about $1,500. Now like I said, this has to be done three days after you sign the contract and they will hold that till the end of the transaction. Now, if you're dealing with buying a cash property off of a wholesaler, it's gonna require a little bit more money. Their requirements are dependent on the size of the company. If it's a small local guy, maybe you give them $3,000. If it's a bigger company, then maybe you end up having to pay $5,000. Typically in those transactions, the money is non-refundable, meaning that you cannot get it back unless they're able to provide clear title. Now, in that case, we'll talk about when things go wrong at the end of this video. So now we know what earnest money is, what is to be expected, and how much it is. Like I said, it can range anywhere from a dollar to 1% all the way up to three to $5,000. I've even seen on bigger multifamily transactions anywhere up to $100,000 for earnest money. It's really just so that people know you're going to do what you say you're going to do. It's earnest money. 
Now let's talk about when things go wrong and the deal doesn't close. What happens to that earnest money? Well, let's start with the traditional transaction. The money is at title company, the deal fell apart. Now you have to determine whose fault is it that the deal fell apart? Because if the deal falls apart and it's the buyer's problem, well then the buyer will lose that earnest money. Say the deal falls apart and it's the seller's fault, well, you guessed it, the seller loses the money. So technically the seller never had it and in those cases it's usually the the buyer is the one ends up paying be either their financing falls apart or they don't like the deal and they waited too long to back out of the deal what typically happens is you both will end up signing a release of earnest money meaning that you both relinquish your rights and in there it will state who it goes to whether that's the seller or the buyer once again it's going to go back to why did the deal not close if it's the seller's fault, they could not get clear title, the wholesaler couldn't figure the problems out, they're going to release that earnest money back to you. Or if it doesn't happen by the closing date that you initially agreed on, you have the option to extend or get your earnest money back. Now, for instance, if the on comes to close and you do not close, well, you can see where this is going. You have to release it back to the wholesaler. Now the money, if it's at title, once again, you're still gonna both have to sign a release and this is where it gets tricky because in Texas, you both have to agree that I'm getting the money or you're getting the money because if you both do not sign that release of earnest money, the title company has a right to keep that money and then it will actually go to the state after a certain amount of time. At least this is how it works in Texas learn how it is in your area, especially if you're in this business. Now last, we're gonna talk about dealing with the seller and what happens if the deal goes wrong. Well, a lot of times with sellers, they back out of deals. It is what it is, whether they get a higher offer or whatever. Regardless, you need to make sure that you have a memo in place. And if you guys don't know what memos are, there's another video on my channel coming soon and you'll be able to explain how memos work and why it protects you while you're wholesaling. Anyways, when it comes to this type of transaction, once again, if your money is at the title company, you both have to agree on it. This is why it can be a little tricky and you don't want to overextend yourself and put down too much earnest money with the seller because if something goes away, well, you're going to lose the money. And I've had it happen and we've lost a couple thousand dollars because the seller changed their mind and then I could not get them to sign the release of earnest money nor even talk to me. It is what it is. Just chalk it up as a, as a loss. And this is also why you want to make sure that you put down as least amount as possible when wholesaling. I hope this video has been informational for you guys. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and I have a lot more videos coming out and also weekly vlogs if you guys want to see what I actually do on my day-to-day -day when it comes to the flipping wholesaling business. If you haven't already, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and uh, tell a friend, guys. Until next week, peace.